TV trash. The Simpsons. Quite simply put, this is one of, if not the most influential animated show ever. The Simpsons helped redefine comedy and animation. Believe it or not, it was really edgy and controversial for its time when it debuted in 1988, but it definitely hit its stride when it stopped being mostly about Bart's rebel-rousing antics and, if anything, made Homer the most central character among its growing cast. Of course, a long runner like this is gonna have its bad spots, and most seem to believe that the show is long past its prime, though when the decline started it is highly debated. And yet, while many agree that the show isn't as good as it once was, when it comes to listing the worst Simpsons episode ever, most still go back to one in particular from all the way back in the show's ninth season. Let's look at the principal and the pauper. In honor of Seymour's 20th year as principal, we've decided to hold a surprise tribute Friday night. I need a volunteer to present an oral report on Principal Skinner's life. Ralph and I could do the report together. See, that's cooperation by fellow students. Are you listening, Glee cast? I have never been happier or prouder to be Seymour Skinner. You're not Seymour Skinner. Skinner! Skinner? I'm Skinner. It's true, I'm... <sighs> I'm... an imposter. That man is the real Seymour Skinner. What? No, seriously, what? That doesn't make any damn sense! So begins one of the stupidest retcons in the history of television. My real name is... Armin Tamzarian. <gasps> I myself was once a street punk. It was just a matter of time before I wound up in front of a judge. Jail, the army, or apologizing to the judge and the old lady. You know, of course, if I'd known there was a war going on, I probably would have apologized. It's here that Armin met the real Seymour Skinner in a trench even though America didn't use trench warfare in Vietnam. I seem to recall them using trenches in some other flashbacks to Skinner's past, so I give them credit for being consistent in their inaccuracy. Long story short, Skinner appears to have been killed in combat, and Armin decides to send the news to his mom. What, they don't send telegrams anymore? Seymour? Is that you? I don't know why I did what I did. I guess I couldn't bear to tell her about her son. What I did was wrong, but I'd do it again. Yes, mother, it's me! And thus, eight years of continuity are flushed completely down the drain for a completely unfunny storyline. Seriously, this opens up a ton of plot holes, including the fact that this aired two years after Curse of the Flying Hellfish, so this means that Seymour's father, Sheldon Skinner, now looks a lot like Armin Tanzarian. I mentioned last week that the Glee writers love to press the reset button, the Simpsons writers must have the freaking history eraser button! You're just a stranger, pretending to be something he's not. Well, that's your problem, blue hair! Really, after re-watching this thing, I don't see what the big deal is. What really happened was Armin became the man Seymour Skinner wanted him to be. Everything he's done, even assuming his identity, wasn't done out of selfishness, but done in Seymour Skinner's memory. He turned his life around one way or another, and in essence, you could claim Armin Tanzarian was the one who died on that battlefield. You're actually making me sympathize with a guy who committed identity theft. That's how screwed up this episode is. I've called this assembly to announce my retirement. So Skinner, I mean Armin, heads to the storage facility where he kept his old stuff, hopefully he won't wake up good old Gil sleeping in the other unit, and pulls out his old motorcycle, which despite not having been used in more than two decades, somehow runs perfectly well. 
So the real Seymour Skinner just up and becomes the new principal, despite having no teaching certification whatsoever. And Armin, despite having such training, becomes a promoter for a topless club. He was subsequently fired when he got caught trying to make sure the girls' panties were all hiked at the same level. Meanwhile, the people of Springfield eventually decide that the new Seymour Skinner just isn't the type they want. So basically, this guy is the Dick Sargent of Seymour Skinner's. And thus leads to the one scene of this episode that is kind of funny. Where are we going? To Capital City. And why are you and the old lady in the car? We're gonna talk Armin Tamsarian into coming back. And why is Marge here? I came up with the idea. And why am I here? Because the streets of Capital City are no place for three unescorted ladies. And why are the kids here? Because we couldn't find Grandpa to sit for them. And why is Grandpa here? Because Jasper didn't want to come by himself. Eh, fair enough. See, it doesn't make sense. But it doesn't make sense from a joke perspective. I am such a dork to understand that. So yeah, just like that, Armin is brought back to Springfield to a hero's welcome, but there's still a matter with what to do with the real Skinner. But I'm a hero! And we salute you for it. Now don't come back! Yeah, you probably shouldn't have listened to the guy who will eventually break up the town in a dispute over area codes. By authority of the city of Springfield, I hereby confer upon you the name of Seymour Skinner. This episode was stupid! This is far from the worst thing I've ever seen, but yeah, it does look like they just didn't put a lot of effort into this episode. The plot is contrived and nonsensical, even by this show's standards, and ultimately just not that funny. It's like they needed a filler episode, came up with the most ludicrous plot element they could, and then just slapped a story around it. To their credit, the show's producers do seem to get that this was a failure of an episode, and they've ridiculed it on numerous occasions since then. And now I guess I gotta prepare to get deluged with comments comparing me to comic book guy for this. See you next time on TV Trash.